we can try this again. Here we go. We are streaming now. Let's see. Science story time. Go live. Okay. Well, I did have a bunch of Instagram viewers. Now I don't. Sorry about all that. Um, but I think we are getting started now. Whew. Okay. Hello, Facebook Live. Hello, Instagram Live. We had a little bit of technical trouble, so we're a few minutes late. But better late than never is what I always say. Today, we are finishing up our Build It Week with two great stories. The first story that I love is called Iggy Peck Architect. I just got it in the mail. I've been waiting to read this. It's very hard to find on any of the library digital archives because how popular it is. Um, I'm also waiting to get into the mail some of the companion books. Um, Sophie Velez, Future Prez, Ada Twist, Scientist, and I think there's one more that I'm not sure. So. If you are here on Instagram or Facebook, type in the comments where you're viewing from so I know that this is working. I see that we've got at least one viewer on Facebook, so I think it's time to get started. We're going to start today with a book called 21 Elephants and Still Standing. And this is a book about um, archi um, uh, being the architect for a very famous large bridge. So, without further ado, let's bring that book up. Whoops, it is the wrong window. That's so silly. Let's switch, switch that up. 21 Elephants. Okay, there we go. All right, here we go. 21 Elephants and still counting. And if you are joining me on Instagram and you would like to see the pictures, switch over to Facebook. I still don't know how to share uh, computer images on Instagram, but we will get there eventually. Okay, here we go. 21 Elephants and still counting. And still standing. Small print, so I'm going to have to bring it closer. Okay, let's see here. For 14 years, they'd watch it rise. The city's school teachers, bankers, cabinet makers, pointing and gawking, ooing and eyeing, cheering as the great pillars grew. Then came woven steel cables, strung graceful and strong, like stairways straight to the stars. Wow, that looks really fancy. Taller and longer, bigger and broader, a bridge of infinite dreams. New York and Brooklyn, dwarfed by its arches, knew the future had entered their sights. Amazing, worth the waiting, it was simply breathtaking, the eighth wonder of the world. Some wondered how long it would stand. When the day finally came and the Brooklyn Bridge opened, the landmark was given its due. Flags were waved, bands played, kids hooray! before bigwigs and top hats galore. At night, there were fireworks, skyrockets of light that raised for an hour from the top of the towers to the roar of the crowds down below, packed on sailboats and steamers amidst bright colored streamers, people partied until the sun rose. It's always fun after finishing a project to celebrate. For the two sister cities, there were special excitement. They were linked by a magnificent bond. Now over the river, not on its swift current, they could visit, do business, see sights. Sweethearts could take moonlight strolls. The bridge was exquisite, a true work of art, the greatest feat of its day. But so long and so lofty, its cable so new, some had to ask, is it safe? To the double-ridden few, friends sang the thing's virtues, the arches, the truss work, the view. Still, some could not be persuaded. Similar bridges have fallen. 
Who wants to bargain this bridge won't dance in the wind? So some people were nervous to get on the bridge because they had never seen something so big. One man who heard this, Phineas T. Barnum, um, saw in saw in the doubt an opportunity for Phineas T. Barnum always looked on the bright side. Phineas T. Barnum was larger than life, the world famous showman's most awesome creation, the greatest show on earth. Yet Barnum's ideas weren't contained by a tent. I will stage an event that will calm every fear, erase every worry about that remarkable bridge. My display will amuse, inform, and astound, or else my name isn't Barnum. Okay, I just picked up my fan, so let me know if that gets too loud and I can put it back down. So one evening in May 1884, the circus headed for Brooklyn. It traveled by water, except for old Barnum's most massive, most gallant attraction. Up Broadway, they sauntered, trainers and charges, enchanting more than a few. Onlookers went wild and filed behind, beguiled by the pachyderm procession. For the public prized elephants, especially Jumbo, pride of the circus rings, with his height of 12 feet, the good-natured beast was America's oversized darling. On the... Uh, on the group marched past City Hall, past mothers, fathers, and children. Then the bridge straight ahead, the spectacle mounting with the giant's first steps on the roadway. One after another, the elephants pressed onward, silently trusting the wood planks and steel. Five, six, and then seven were crossing. Ten, eleven, and still there were more. Some onlookers ogled, some giggled with glee, some questioned comparisons, uh, companions or strangers. How many pounds can the wondrous bridge hold? How many elephants are too great a load? Swaying and rumbling, still they were coming, the parade of elephant bulk. So, so far so good. At the end of the line came Jumbo himself for 21 elephants in all. The seven-ton star seemed to waggle his ears in reply to admirers' cheers. And though the bridge stretched a mile in just a short while and much to the people's delight, the elephants had crossed with the bridge still aloft. Barnum pronounced the thing sound. In the following days, some doubted strolls, the greatest bridge on earth. What else did they do once they'd savor the view? And it is a beautiful view from there. Oh, my fan ran out of battery. Looks like I'll just sweat it out. That is okay. <laughs> Why, they went to the big top, of course. The end. That's a great story, a great story about architecture, building a bridge, but also how you get the public to trust that your bridge is good. Because we all know that we can build something and make it look good, but it has to actually be able to function as well. So now I would like to read to you my newest book in my collection, Iggy Peck, Architect, to finish out our Build It Week. Then, I'm going to teach you how to make your very own Magnus glider using just two plastic or paper or styrofoam cups, some tape, and some rubber bands. But first, the book. Okay, let me get scooch this out of the way. Iggy Peck Architect. Oh, 
and I always love the beginning pages because even though the story didn't start yet, we can start to get an idea of what might happen. Young Iggy is an architect and has been since he was two when he built a great tower in only an hour with nothing but diapers and glue. Let's see, I'm going to just shift uh, my setup a tiny, tiny bit just so that my Instagram is at the same height as my Facebook. Okay, let's try that. Oh, that looks great. Okay. Good gracious, Ignatius, his mother exclaimed. That's the coolest thing I've ever seen. But her smile faded fast as a wind blew past and she realized the diapers were not clean. Ignatius, my son, what on earth have you done? That's disgusting and nasty. It stinks. But Iggy was gone. He was out on the lawn using dirt clods to build a great sphinx. And the sphinx is something that humans built in Egypt a long, long time ago. So it looks like Iggy used that and remade it. And you might notice in the background a very disgruntled and very sunburned neighbor. When Iggy was three, his parents could see his unusual passion would stay. He built churches and chapels from peaches and apples and temples from modeling clay. Looks like the parents are off somewhere fancy. I wonder where they're going. At dinner one night, to his father's delight, Iggy got a bright gleam in his eye and out on the porch built the St. Louis Arch from pancakes and coconut pie. Wow, talk about playing with your food. Dear Ig had it made until second grade when his teacher was Miss Lila Greer. On the very first day, she had this to say, we do not talk about buildings here. Gothic or Romanesque, I couldn't care less about buildings, ancient or new. She said in her lecture about architecture that it had no place in grade two. And remember, architecture is that big fancy word for people who build things. And we know that Iggy Peck loves being an architect. And it looks like in the very corner, He's already building something. That might seem severe, but she was sincere. For when she was no more than seven, she had a great fright at a dizzying height in a building so tall it scraped heaven. On an architect's tour of the 95th floor, young Lila got lost from the group. So this is the teacher back when she was little and she still has the same hairstyle. She was found two days later in a stuck elevator eating cheese with French circus troupe. And after that day, it's quite safe to say she thought all building lovers were nuts. As a teacher, she taught that, above all, one ought to avoid them. No ifs, ands, or buts. And let me try that rhyme again. It didn't quite rhyme when I read it. After that day, it's quite safe to say, she thought all building lovers were nuts. As a teacher, she taught that, above all, one ought to avoid them. No ifs, ands, or buts. Maybe it was just a stretch of a rhyme. So it looks like she got stuck in an elevator with a bunch of French circus troops. That is weird. And that would be really scary. Sometimes if something scary happens to us, we really don't like that 
thing anymore. Like one time I was learning how to body surf, um, kind of like a boogie board, but with your body. And I got tumbled in a wave and it scared me. And I remember my nose was bleeding and I got all roughed up by the shells, but I really just wanted to get back out there and try it again. Even though what I like to call I got washing machined. So sometimes we just have to get right back at it. As you might guess, it would cause Iggy stress to hear such terrible talk. But he didn't hear. He sat in the rear while building a castle of chalk. You, Iggy Peck, your desk is a wreck. Tear that castle down right now. You will not build in here. Is that perfectly clear? Do you need to see Principal Howe? Uh-oh. And all of his classmates are staring at him like, uh Oh, uh, what did he just do? No, ma'am, Iggy said. He lowered his head and his heart sank down to the floor. With no chance to build, his interest was killed. And now, second grade was a bore. Just like this illustrated page. It's just poor Iggy alone at his desk. Oh, no. After 12 long days that passed in a haze of reading, writing, and arithmetic, Miss Greer took the class to Blue River Pass for a hike and an old-fashioned picnic. Arithmetic is another word for math, but this it says arithmetic, trying to rhyme with picnic, and I don't think it quite works. But anyway, here's the line. We see Iggy Peck all the way in the back. And they're all on their way to a field trip. Led by Miss Greer. They crossed an old trestle to a small island nestled in the heart of burbling stream. But they no sooner passed than the footbridge collapsed. And Miss Lila Greer started to scream. <gasps> We're trapped here. Oh my. Alas, kids, goodbye. Her eyes rolled back into her head. She dropped to the ground with a vague groaning sound, luckily fainted, not dead. Uh-oh. The class was amazed. They stood there quite dazed, uncertain of what they should do. But one bright young man was off hatching a plan, which started with Miss Lila's shoe. See, they're using things that are all around them already. They didn't, they can't buy anything. And I feel the same way. I don't want to go out and buy anything right now because I'm trying to save money. So I do my experiments with things that I find around the house. Soon, each lad and lass there at Buck River Pass was working together as one. Wow, I love this page because there's so much teamwork going on. Let's look a little closer. Over here, we've got a bunch of friends pulling on a branch together. We've got one of the classmates pulling Miss Greer's shoe off. We've got someone carrying a bundle of sticks. Someone looking through the picnic chest. Wait a second. I think she's sneaking cookies. Someone is tying a bunch of shoes together. Then we've got Iggy who's making the um, drawing or the blueprint. We talked about blueprints when we read about Roberto as well. And then we've got some of the girls up in the corner. They're tying a bunch of the shoelaces together. Cool. And when she came to, Miss Lila Greer knew that something quite brave had been done. She looked in the air and saw hanging there a structure with cables and braces. And on the far side, beaming with pride, were 17 smiling young faces. And don't they look so proud? 
boots, tree roots, and strings, fruit roll-ups and things, some of which one should not mention, were stretched ridge to ridge in a glorious bridge dangling from shoestring suspension. And this is the full page here. And as you can see, it does look really similar to the Brooklyn Bridge that we just saw elephants testing. Do you think that 21 elephants could go on this bridge? I wouldn't bet on it, but it does look strong enough for Miss Greer's class. Also, did anyone notice what's on top of the flag? It's underpants. That's so silly. It all became clear to Miss Lila Greer as she crossed the bridge over the stream. There are worse things to do when you're in grade two than to spend your time building a dream. And now she's on the blueprint for the Golden Gate Bridge. And instead of blue, this one's orange. So not all blueprints are blue. Now every week at Blue River Creek Elementary in second grade, all the school kids can hear, along with Miss Greer, how the world's greatest buildings were made. The weekly guest speaker in t-shirts and sneakers talks of buildings from Rome to Quebec. Of course, he's the guy who builds towers from pie, that brilliant young man, Iggy Peck. And there's Iggy Peck talking about his very favorite buildings. The end. Wow, what a great story. I love Iggy Peck. And I'm glad that Iggy Peck also taught his teacher a lesson. His teacher was scared of big buildings, but Iggy showed him that when you use your ingenuity, your creativity, that you can solve a lot of problems. So now I wanna show you how to make your very own Magnus glider. So let me clear my working tray and drag it over. And here's what you're gonna need if you would like to participate in this experiment. You're going to need two disposable cups that your grown-ups don't mind you using. So I have plastic clear cups, that's just what I have, but if you have paper or styrofoam, um, that works too. So we've got two cups. Then you're going to need about two to three rubber bands. Okay, so I've got some rubber bands here. And then you're going to need some tape. I like to use masking tape, but I'm not exactly sure where my masking tape went. So I'm just gonna use packing tape for today. I don't love my packing tape because it's very hard to find where the edge is. So the very first thing that you're gonna do when building your Magnus glider is you're gonna make a donut out of your tape. If I can get mine off. Ooh, my fingers are so sweaty, it's all ripping. There we go. Okay, so once you get your tape, cut it. I realize now that it's very hard to see and make a donut with the tape so that the sticky side is on the outside, then put it on the bottom of one of the cups, just like this. Then, and it doesn't have to be perfect because we're gonna cover it up. Then with the other cup, you're going to put it on top, just like this, so that the tape is holding it together. And this is just so... Ooh, my closet just fell down. Strange. Looks like Brittany's gonna have to be an architect after this. Okay, um, where was I? Oh yes, the cups are glued together. And of course I accidentally let go of my tape so now I have to get it again. Now the next thing that we're gonna do is we are going to wrap, oh puppies, why can't I ever get this all in one piece? It always ends up shredded. Whew, getting a little sweaty in here because I can't get the tape open, but I will never give up because that's the kind of crafter I am. 
Okay, there we go. This time I'm not going to let go of it. All right, so I'm going to cut a pretty big piece now. And I'm going to make sure to put the tape on the plastic so that I don't lose it again. And this time we're going to take our cups and I'm going to fold up or fold down the little pieces of tape that are sticking out. And now I'm going to wrap the tape around the middle of the cups. And I'm going to use the palm of my hand like this to gently squeeze all of the air bubbles out. So now it doesn't matter if it doesn't look perfect because this is something more that's going to fly than it is something to decorate. Although if you do have styrofoam cups, you can use crayons on the styrofoam and that looks cool. With this one, I could always draw on a piece of paper and then coil the paper inside to make a design. But for now, I just want to show you how to make it fly. So now we've got our glider. And even though this was a really easy experiment to make, it's going to be a little hard to learn how to fly. So remember the book we read about Izzy Gizmo and the most magnificent thing? They got really frustrated when their inventions didn't work right away. So just remember, it's going to take a little bit of patience to learn this trick. So we're going to take our pincher fingers, our pointer finger and our thumb, and we're going to hold the cup just like this so that our fingers are on the crease. Then, with our rubber bands, which actually you can put the cup down because I forgot to tell you this part, we're going to take two to three rubber bands and cut them and then tie them all back together so you get one giant rubber band. If you happen to have a giant rubber band at home, you only need one. I needed about four. Um, but I like to make mine about a foot long, but I could have probably just used those three. Okay, so now let's resume with the pinching. So we're going to pinch the cups just like this. And then we're going to put the rubber band underneath our pointer finger. So it's hanging down from the back. Then we're going to stretch it so it's really tight and we're not going to let go. While it's stretched, we're going to wrap it around but not over our fingers. If you wrap it over your finger, you will snap yourself. So we're wrapping it around and then we want it to end on the underside of the cup pointing forward. So you want to point it to where you want it to fly. Then in order to get it to fly, all you have to do is let go of your pincher hand. You're going to keep your hand on the rubber band and let go. Oops, mine didn't work right away. So I'm going to try mine again. Because remember, when we use the scientific method, it's important that we do things more than once. And honestly, I think my hands being a little sweaty is what's keeping it stuck. There we go. So with the Magnus Glider, what you're doing is you're spinning the cup in the rubber band. As the cup goes down the track that you made for the rubber bands, it starts picking up speed. And it looks like it's floating. It doesn't even look like it's flying, which is really cool. So, uh, meanwhile, I'll be chasing after those all afternoon. Um, and that was today's science story time. So that's the end of our two uh, week long theme of Build It Weeks. And so if you have a suggestion for what we should learn next week, let me know. Drop it in the comments. Um, I have some good ideas, but I want to see what you guys are thinking. If you have any books to recommend, any songs you want me to sing, or any topics, uh, make sure you comment them or message me. I would also love to see any of the experiments that you try or the crafts that you try. And if you do, you can send them to any of my social media accounts, which is B, B E E, the scientist. Um, before we end, I just want to thank all of you who have been with me all episodes. Um, my aunt Renee has been here almost every single episode. Same with my mom and also the Oldham family, Kira and Lainey. Thank you so much for tuning in. We've got uh, also my friend Becky is here. Thank you so much for tuning in. Oh, the water, water, water song. We're going to have to do that next week for sure. Um, it really, really means a lot to me that you are all trusting me with your little ones or just with your own entertainment. 
So if I taught you something new, if you enjoyed the book, if I gave you a half hour of peace from your kids, please feel free to donate below to the PayPal uh, or the Venmo. Um, and also, hello to Teach More. I'm not sure who that is. I can't see the thumbnail, but I know it's one of my education friends. Um, so yes, feel free to donate. It is not expected, but it is appreciated for this laid off educator going into the summer. So as you all know, before we leave, it's time for our goodbye song. So sing it with me and then I'll see you next week, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. It's Harvey. Oh my gosh. Hi, Harvey. Of course, Teach More is Harvey. Harvey is, uh, you know, now that I don't work there anymore, I could say this, one of my favorite volunteers that I worked with um, who trains seeing eye dogs. So that's really, really cool. Um, hey, Harvey, thanks for tuning in. All right, and now to our goodbye song. So long, farewell to you, my friends. Goodbye for now until we meet again. So long. Farewell to you, my friends. Goodbye for now until we meet again. It's been great to play and read together in the hive, but now it's time to say goodbye. So long, farewell to you, my friends. Goodbye for now until we meet again. Thanks for tuning in, everybody. See you next week.